Hello there, wrestling fans of the world, and welcome to the very second edition of the Boss's Bravado here on the Video Bros Network. I am the host of the show. I am Bobby Munson, and I'm here to bring you a special edition of the show where we're going to review night one of Wrestle Kingdom 15. It took place on Monday, January the 4th from the Tokyo Dome in Japan. And hey, first of all, foremost, like there was a live audience at this thing. We have not really seen a large live audience at any event for quite some time. This was quite uh, unique to see. Uh, there was rules being set forth according to the announcers of the night. They were saying that rules included that the fans were not allowed to scream, cheer, uh, do any of the kind of things that would maybe project any sort of way of bringing the virus out if anybody there was present with it. Everybody was masked up. It seemed to be distancing between some of the seats there, although a very large packed crowd. Uh, the way they were allowed to make noise was clapping, stomping, and using thunder sticks throughout the night. So at least the audio was authentic. That was the best part about it. Uh, very happy to see that we got some authentic audio at a wrestling show for once uh, where fans were actually present there. So that was very nice to see. Got to admit, I actually missed the very opening to this show, so I did not catch the battle royal that took place. There was a battle royal uh, that ended up taking place. Uh, Yano ended up taking the win. Uh, to, uh, that's uh, Toru Yano took the win of that battle royal. And that now means that Yano, Bad Luck Folly, Bushi, and Chase Owens are going to advance to the second night of Wrestle Kingdom. Uh, where they will compete for a provisional KOPW 2021 trophy. So definitely uh, leading to some interesting storytelling for night two of the show. So I like that whole, some of these matches reflect what's going to happen on the second night, making it uh, very more investable when it comes to your time as a pro wrestling fan. Uh, so where I picked up in the show, this would be the what I started with was Hiromu Takaha Takahashi. Uh, taking on El Fantasmo, and so this match, uh, quite a back and forth, really uh, quick paced battle between these two. Don't really know a lot about either one of these guys, I uh, haven't really paid attention to their work just yet. And uh, after watching this match, I'm not necessarily saying I'm not going to ever watch their stuff, but I'm just not really sold on any of them. I, I get the El Fantasmo arrogance and stuff like that, and doing this I don't know what this the salute to Bullet Club leaders of the past and stuff like that. It just I really there wasn't much to sell me on either of these guys gimmickly. It was not enough to sell me on either of these guys uh, in ring work. Anything that was at least memorable enough for me to go back and want to check it out again. My my mind can be changed quite easily. Uh, all it takes is, you know, one good promo, one good match to get me back interested in either one of them. Uh, so anyway, uh Talking uh, Takahashi ended up picking up the victory here over El Phantasmo. Uh, so that uh, means, again, this is going to play a factor into night two. So Takahashi now goes on to face IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion Taiji Ishimori on night two of the event. So definitely uh, the, the appeal to this whole thing is that second night. And a lot of guys picking up or, you know, at least selling the idea of some big injuries that could lead to them struggling in their matches for night number two. Again, at the time of the recording of this, I have not seen night number two, although it has happened already. So I just want to let you know that uh, keep any spoilers to a minimum or to none at all, please, in the comment section below. Uh, up next, there was the Tag Team Championship, the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championship match. It was Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa taking on the t the Tag Team Champions, Zack Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi. And yes, the story goes, Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa uh, have a bit of a curse when it comes to trying to win titles or defend titles at the Tokyo Dome. Uh, this was their opportunity to set a record as champions and stuff like that becoming the seven time this would be a history making seven time iwgp heavyweight tag team champions which would be the all-time new record in new japan pro wrestling so yes and accomplished they did this match was uh, a lot more interesting a lot more vibrant and you know appealing to me i mean again the opener didn't really do it for me this match had a little bit more intrigue, more interest. I really like Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. I think they're both really great. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. has got, you know, great potential and stuff like that. I know a lot of people are really high on his work. Again, for me, not 
100% behind Zack Sabre's stuff just yet. But I do know there's a great work rate and a lot to be said about what he can do and what's to be done there. And I have seen good matches of him, so I am invested in him. Just he's not high on my priority list and not the same with Tai Chi. I, 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 tai Chi is great. It does good work in the ring and stuff like that. They made a great tag team together and everything like that. But just, you know, as far as teams go, I just feel like their their team just wasn't as much a team as what Tama Tonga and Tonga Lo are. I think they're better representatives of a tag division in general and everything. I feel they are made to be a tag team, and it was great to see them winning the tag team titles for a seventh time. So, yes, uh, this match, a lot more interesting, a lot more intriguing. Liked it. Uh, a promo came up with John Moxley appearing with the new, you know, in a New Japan ring. Uh, hasn't defended his title, his United States Heavyweight Championship in a long time. And that uh, he's coming back. Uh, Kenta, you know, then basically went out and defeated Satoshi Kojima, who was being, who replaced uh, an injured Juice Robinson. This leading to the idea that we're going to get Kenta versus Moxley. Um, Kenta's good. I like Kenta. Uh, in the match with Satoshi Kojima, interesting. Enjoyed it. Thought it was decent. You know, a little bit of a good breather match in between the, the battles that were going on and stuff like that to, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, everything wasn't exactly like this crazy match that we're going to get later in the show and stuff like that. Uh, the only thing I don't care for is, and you know, hate me for it, John Moxley. I have not enjoyed anything that this guy has done since leaving WWE. Uh, this is not because I'm just hung up on WWE guys either. Uh, John Moxley is a death match wrestler when it comes to being able to do his own thing. And it is not interesting to me. It is it makes no sense. There's no logic behind it. There's no logic behind his matches either. I know a lot of you people go batshit crazy because you see some chairs come out and some thumbtacks come out and all this stuff coming out. But if there's no purpose behind it, and if you're not going to sell getting hurt in these matches, then it really demeans everything about pro wrestling in general. You know, you got these guys coming out with baseball bats, getting hit with a baseball bat. You ever try getting hit with a baseball bat? You know, I have them because I know that I ain't getting back up afterwards from it. And neither should these guys when it happens inside of a wrestling ring. And John Moxley has destroyed all logic when it comes to professional wrestling these days. And unfortunately, I do not hold him in the same regards everyone else did. I didn't mind his work when he was uh, working with the Shield. I even got... Uh, Thought really highly of him outside of the Shield when he went solo there and had a bunch of matches with Seth Rollins. I thought that they were doing some great work. But unfortunately, since then, it's gone back to the old Moxley of old when he was working in CZW and doing these crazy, de unnecessary death matches. And that's what doesn't intrigue me. I, I know that at least Moxley in New Japan is more interesting than Moxley in AEW. So at least there's that benefit that we might get to see coming up here. But unfortunately, Moxley just doesn't cut it for me. And that's just the way it is. So after that, uh, the New Japan Pro Wrestling Company took a bit of an intermission. This was an opportunity for them to make sure sanitizing was done and stuff like that uh, before uh, continuing on. So making sure that they're complying with uh, COVID-19 uh, policies as well, too. So uh, from there, we get back into things. And Hiroshi Tanahashi uh, did battle with... Uh, a new rookie, uh, Great Okan, and I like the look and everything of Great Okan. I think this Great Okan could be a very interesting character, but very new, very, very green, and doesn't quite, quite get there. Not yet. And again, I'm going to say not yet. I know I think I saw a lot of people complaining that Great Okan does not have that intimidating factor. And I think the intimidating factor will come with time, hopefully. Great Okan uh, continuing to work on that should be able to pick up something over time and become a very intimidating individual. Uh, what I liked is this isn't your high flying affair. It didn't have to be all over the place and stuff like this. This one was a lot more centered uh, with Tanahashi. Um, so yeah, it was a, a more physical match and yeah, this, this was great for Tanahashi picking up the win. Uh, great Okan, again, with a lot more work. And I say a lot more work. There could be something interesting there. I could be wrong. I could be going out on a limb. Maybe he won't get it. Maybe it won't ever happen. But, uh, you know, give it a few more years and I've seen maybe some better things for Great Okan 
in the future. Uh, so, yes, uh, then we saw, you know, a big match, probably the match of the night in so many ways. I Many people might want to argue this one with me. Uh, this one was Okada versus Will Ospreay. And this match here, this one definitely did it for me. I enjoyed this matchup from start to finish. I mean, Again, I could nitpick a couple things with the length of the time and, you know, the false finishes that maybe were a little unnecessary towards the end as well, too. Because a lot of them just kind of came fast and furious. And I know this is Wrestle Kingdom. So, you know, you, you, you can kind of let go of a little bit of disbelief and believe that, you know, because this is a big stage and there's that much more heart and intensity that guys will kick out of more and stuff like that. Granted, I, I can give it that. And I think that's why when it comes to this match, I can give it that by for sure. And, you know, I really like Okada's work. I think Okada is fantastic. Uh, one of the best, actually, that you can get. And Will Ospreay is a hell of a worker as well, too. And, I mean, his, you know, heel turn here and working as a heel definitely uh, works in his favor in so many ways. Uh, he definitely was not going for the high spots and everything like that that, you know, a baby face would. And definitely left a lot of the bigger spots for later in the match between the two of them. So these two sold what was a great matchup. Great way to kick off 2021 as well, too. So, wonderful to see this matchup. Um, yeah, so in the end, uh, Okada getting the victory. It was great, well-done matchup and a big, great win for Okada. Uh, then we go on to the main event of the evening. So, after this fantastic 35-minute battle between Okada and Will Ospreay, we're going to the main event, which is booked. It is the Golden Star Kota Abushi. And going up against the IWGP double champion, Tetsuya, not NATO. Uh, this match, again, another match that went on quite a while, 30 minutes in the end. Uh, this one had a lot more like these crazy out-of-the-ring spots a lot of the time. I mean, don't be wrong, Okada and Osprey had a table spot outside the ring and everything. So I know people might try to come in and argue this one and stuff like that, but... A lot of this one went to the outside. A lot of crazy spots. Like, there was that. I mean, it's, as cool as it looks and as athletic as it is, when they do the hurricanrana from the apron uh, to the outside, and Jesus Christ, NATO's foot or leg goes through that barrier and stuff like that. I'm thinking, like, man, these guys have a death wish. I mean, or at least they don't care to see what life is like uh, when they reach the age of 50 or beyond kind of thing. Because, like... Some of this stuff is just, like, beyond silly at times and stuff like that. Because there is no control. I mean, there's a certain level of control, but it also, you can't control all the elements around that ringside. And again, those barriers are unforgiving. These are not rigged by any means. They're not set there to, you know, make sure that the wrestler stays protected so that you can see a cool move done on television or a cool move done in a live event. These two are putting a lot of risk into this stuff. And man, did they put a lot of risk into this one. Again, a good match. I enjoyed it. It wasn't quite as good as Okada and Will Ospreay, in my personal opinion. But man, it was good. And man, Abushi is looking damn solid these days. Man, he's got quite the build on him. Looking like he deserves to be a champion. So anyway, in the end, Kota Abushi picking up the win. Becoming the new IWGP double champion. And that means that... On the next show, he's going to be defending those belts up against the man who's going to interrupt him and remind him of this, Jay White. So that one's set up for night two of Wrestle Kingdom. Did I enjoy Wrestle Kingdom night one? Yes, I got to say I did. I've been enjoying a lot of wrestling as of late, uh, especially from companies outside of the WWE and AEW banner. Uh, those two companies can pretty much buzz off right now for all I care because they just have produced garbage in 2020. And have not done anything to really set forth 2021 on a better foot just yet either. However, New Japan Pro Wrestling comes out this year with Wrestle Kingdom 15. Not to anyone's surprise, great show. Very enjoyable. Had a lot of fun watching it. A lot of great things that uh, came out of that as well too. So thank you New Japan Pro Wrestling for a great night of Wrestle Kingdom. I'm looking forward to watching night two and doing a review of that one for you guys as well too. And also... Stay tuned because we got a lot of Ring Respect radio episodes coming up soon. Going to be doing some recording with my good pal Papa Smokes, the man with the angelic voice. 
And we're going to be giving you the rundown on everything MLW, NWA, and also talking about the un- upcoming MLW event. Yes, we're talking about Kings of Coliseum, which is coming out on Wednesday night. So check that all out. I want to thank you for tuning in to this special edition, my review of New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom Night 1. I am Bobby Munson, and if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button down below, and go ahead and give us a like, and make sure to let everybody know about the Video Bros Network right here on YouTube.